call an actuary a superhero is very conceited. Hey there aspiring actuaries, if we haven't met before, my name is Michelle, this is Actuarial, and I have to admit something. When I meet new people, I don't always tell them that I'm an actuary. Every profession has a range of duties and responsibilities associated with it, but some professions just boil down to a more succinct, understandable, quick sentence of what I do. A doctor helps sick people. I get that. A teacher teaches you new things. I get that. An actuary quantifies risk? What? The main reason why I have this channel is to try to make the actuarial profession understandable and accessible to those of you who are maybe interested in becoming an actuary. I try to explain what is an actuary in clear, understandable English, but I haven't been able to succinctly do that in one sentence. So today, I thought I would go to the source. I'm going to go to the websites of the various actuarial societies and see what their what is an actuary definition looks like, see if I understand it, see if I agree with it. I want to look at the Casualty Actuarial Society, the Society of Actuaries, and the Institute of Faculty of Actuaries. Starting off with the society that I'm a part of, the Casualty Actuarial Society, I have been sorely disappointed. Feel free to go search through their website, but I have not been able to find a page that says what is an actuary. They do link to the Be an Actuary website, so I will check that definition out next. But first, we can start with a page that I found that is just about the practice areas of being an actuary, so I thought Let's see what they think actuaries do. The four practice areas that they list off are enterprise risk management, predictive modeling, rate making, and reserving. So that's pretty close to what I've said in previous videos, the why actuaries work in insurance company video that I had done previously. I had mentioned reserving and pricing. Personally, I like to use the word pricing rather than rate making, even though rate making is the correct actuarial term, just because I feel like coming up with insurance prices is a more clear English definition to someone who's not in the insurance industry. So it seems like the CAS agrees with me that the two things that I think are important are also important. I'm absolutely not an ERM expert, but let's see how they define it. ERM is the process by which organizations in all industries assess, control, exploit, finance, and monitor risks from all sources for the purpose of increasing the organization's short and long-term value to its stakeholders. I mean, I think that's a fair definition, I just don't know if it's a clear English definition to someone who doesn't know what that means. I think the word risk can be really confusing, and there are lots of different types of risk. Anything from reputational risk, to operational risk, to financial risk. The interesting thing to note here is that when you hear risk as a non-actuary person, even as an actuary, risk, bad. Bad risk. We don't want risk. But here they talk about assessing risk, which is just understanding what your risks are. As an actuary, I'm not at risk for medical malpractice, but as a doctor I would be. Controlling risk is the let's make sure this risk doesn't happen so much kind of part of it, I would imagine. But the interesting part is the exploiting risk. This is what insurance companies do very well. And ERM is not an insurance company specific thing. Enterprise risk management is for every industry, but insurance companies are particularly good at exploiting risk. We say, you don't want to take on that risk? Pay us and we'll take on that risk. Predictive modeling involves the use of data to forecast future events. Yes. Agreed. It relies on capturing relationships between explanatory variables and the predicted variables from past occurrences. Yes. Agreed and exploiting them to predict future outcomes. Yes, agreed. Look at past data, predict the future. There are 100% absolutely actuaries who focus on predictive modeling, but I would say that as an actuary, a lot of the time, predictive modeling is used as a subset of the other categories. We use predictive modeling to predict prices of insurance. We use predictive modeling to predict our reserve levels. We don't model for the sake of modeling. But I have built non-traditional actuarial models. One of the first predictive models I actually ever built at the company that I work for was trying to predict survey scores for people who had just had a claim with our company. They fill out a survey to say, were you satisfied? And I tried to build a model to predict whether or not people would give us a good score. And the reason why we did that was to be able to separate out the things that we can't control, like a person's age and gender, from things that we can control, like 
how many times they had to call us versus we had to call them about the claim. So predictive modeling can be used anywhere. Rate making is what I do, so let's see what they think. Rate making is the process of establishing rates used in insurance or other risk transfer mechanisms. This process involves a number of considerations, including marketing goals, competition, and legal restrictions to the extent they affect the estimation of future costs associated with the transfer of risk. Yo, I did not understand that and this is what I do. Let's try to break it down. The last bit is kind of good, but albeit not in English. The estimation of future costs associated with the transfer of risk. What does that mean? We take on the risk of you having a car accident, of your house burning down, of your basement flooding, in exchange for a premium. That's the transfer of risk that's happening in an insurance company. You pay me money and I take on your risk. The estimation of future costs is super fundamental to rate making. We are not pricing for past accidents. We are pricing for future accidents. If you had a claim last year, I'm not gonna charge you more next year to make up the money that I already paid out to you. That's not what we do. We're not trying to recoup old money. The reason why your insurance goes up when you have a claim is actually because someone who's already had a claim is more likely to have another claim. <laughs> we are trying to predict the future cost of risk, but we do have to consider all the things that they're talking about, like marketing goals. Maybe we want to grow in a certain area of the country and so we will give a little bit of a discount to those people. Competition. If everyone else is charging $300 and we're charging $500, we just won't be able to sell it. Legal restrictions. A big one that depends on the state or province that you live in is credit score. Some places they let you use credit score to price insurance. Some places they don't let you use credit score to price insurance. Here in Ontario where I work, we can use your credit score to price property insurance, but we cannot use credit score as of the time of filming to price your car insurance. Reserving is the process of evaluating, reviewing, and estimating property and casualty related unpaid claims within insurance, reinsurance, self-insurance, and other risk transfer or funding mechanisms. I mean, there are a lot of words in there. The part that I would stick with was estimating unpaid claims with insurance. As an insurance company, if you give us the risk of you having a claim, and then you have a claim, we have to pay out. And so all the money that we have not yet paid out, we've got to know how much it is. I talk a lot about this in my How Actuaries Use Triangle videos. You should check that one out. It's really good. I spent a lot of time on it. Thumbs it up, please. Like I mentioned, the CAS did not have a what is an actuary section on their website, but they do have a joint website between the CAS and the SOA, so I thought I'd go to the Be an Actuary website and read their what is an actuary definition. Part superhero, part fortune teller, part trusted advisor. I mean... To call an actuary a superhero is very conceited. Becoming an actuary is not a feel-good job. You're not saving orphans, you're not feeding the hungry, but what you are doing is fundamental to the economy. I do believe that actuaries are fundamental to insurance, and insurance is fundamental to a functioning economy. So do we do good work? Do we do important work? Yes. Are we superheroes? No. <laughs> no, no, no. Are we fortune tellers? Absolutely. Our job is to predict the future. Predict how much of a claim you're gonna have in the future before you've had it. It involves a lot of feeling which direction the wind is blowing. It involves a lot of darts thrown at a dartboard. I don't personally have a crystal ball, but I wouldn't be surprised if there are some actuaries that look into it to try to predict the future. I would absolutely agree that we are trusted advisors. There's a real sense at my insurance company that what an actuary says holds a lot of weight. I don't know if we deserve the pedestal that they put us on, but it's nice to feel needed. We manage risk. It's what we do with unbeatable analytical skills. Okay. We help organizations plan for the future and protect themselves from loss. To say that our skills are unbeatable is a little... Yes, an actuary would have strong analytical skills, but there are other professions that also require strong analytical skills. By understanding the very nature of risk, we play a key role in the psychological, physical, and financial stability of society. Absolutely. This goes back to the ERM definition I was talking about before. You have to be able to understand, assess, control, figure out what needs to be contained, what we can exploit, what we need to monitor. We need to be aware of what risk is, and this is fundamental to society for sure. With our help, businesses can grow. Sure. Retirees can invest with confidence. This is for actuaries that work in pension. And people can enjoy peace of mind. We love what we do. I, I love my job most days. Some days I just want to like quit and burrito in a blanket and uh, scroll through TikTok. 
I downloaded TikTok like two days ago and now that's, that's taking up my time. It only makes sense that ours is a top ranked job. After all, we are in high incomes and low stress environments. We enjoy a harmonious work-life balance, our work is intellectually stimulating, and we work in a variety of settings. But no matter where we work, the career comes with one great perk the satisfaction of solving problems and having an impact. Do I earn a high income? I think I do. Is it a low stress environment? I would say most days is low stress. Obviously it ebbs and flows, but I would say most of the time it's pretty chill. Work-life balance wise, we have an expression on my team that is, there's no such thing as an actuarial emergency. I work a regular nine to five. I take a full hour for lunch. I stop and chat at the water cooler with my coworkers. It's a good time. The work is definitely intellectually stimulating a lot of the time. And in a variety of settings, usually I work in a cubicle, so that's not so variety. Nowadays, I'm actually working from home. Not surprising. We all know what's going on in the world. So welcome to my home office. We are the backbone of financial security. Okay. We are the backbone of financial security. Insurance companies, financial planners, and many multinational corporations are hesitant to make certain moves without consulting us first. Who wrote this? I thought, I mean, I thought I had a big ego, but whoever wrote this thinks very highly of themselves. That's because the problems we solve provide a safeguard against catastrophe, and this gives them the confidence to grow, and that benefits everyone. I really have no more to say about that definition. That's just a lot of ego and a lot of patting, patting itself on the back. Society of actuaries. Okay, they seem to have a one sentence definition at the top, let's see if I like it. Actuaries are highly sought after professionals who develop and communicate solutions for complex financial issues. Agreed, but too vague. Let's keep going. Actuaries measure and manage risk. Yes, but again, risk is a hard concept to like, understand. Actuaries have a deep understanding of mathematics, statistics, and business management. With this, they help businesses grow and provide value to their customers. Actuaries help leaders make strategic decisions and consumers prepare for their work. Fair, but I still don't know what an actuary does. Actuaries are in demand. I mean, we're hiring at my company. I get contacted by recruiters all the time, so yeah. They work for and with businesses with a financial focus. Yes. Businesses including insurance life, health, property and casualty. Hey, Even pet insurance. When I was interviewing for internships back in like 2012. I once got an interview question where they asked me how I would price tombstone insurance, which is not something that they sell, but hypothetically what factors would I consider if I wanted to design an insurance product and price it for tombstone insurance. So sometimes you're asked to price strange things. I don't know. Also banking, investments, government, energy, e-commerce, marketing, employee benefits, product development, enterprise risk management, predictive analytics, consulting, and more. All right, so they're just telling us like, where actuaries work, but this doesn't really tell you what an actuary does at all. I can see why people would be confused. If they read this, they're like, cool, a lot of buzzwords, a lot of different industries, but like, what does an actuary do? Let's check out the IFOA website. Actuaries are problem solvers and strategic thinkers with a deep understanding of financial systems. I definitely have to solve problems all day, every day. Identifying problems, coming up with solutions, coming up with creative solutions is a lot of what I do. Uh, strategic thinkers, absolutely. Deep understanding of financial systems. I don't know if I would call my understanding of finance deep. I mean, insurance is a financial product. I wouldn't call myself an expert in financial systems. I understand this one financial product and I do have a broad understanding of how things like investment and option pricing works but I wouldn't call myself an expert at all in like pure financial markets. I think MJ, the fellow actuary, another actuary YouTuber, I believe he specializes in more financy actuarying stuff and he posts a lot of really good videos. I, I enjoy watching him. Actuaries and analysts are experts in risk management. They use their mathematical skills to measure the probability and risk of future events and to predict their financial impact on businesses and their clients. 100%. As a pricing actuary, I'm predicting the future, I need to see how much it's going to cost, and then I need to figure out how much that's going to cost us, and then that's what I do. Being an actuary means having highly valued mathematical skills and expertise. Yes. I feel valued in my job. Actuaries come from different academic backgrounds, but share a love of math, even if they haven't done a math degree. I think this is true in a lot of places. People will come from an economics background, people will come from a generic math background, but here in Canada, I would say 
the majority of people who are actuaries did study actuarial math or actuarial science in university. When you train as an actuary, you'll learn how to analyze data, evaluate financial risks, and communicate this data to non-specialists. This is something I've heard about the IFOA. I, I've never done their exam process, but I think there is an element of how to communicate data that I think is really missing in the North American system. And this is something that I really try to drive when I'm coaching other people in my team or when I'm coaching interns. You can do this whole analysis, but if you can't explain it to anyone, then what are you doing? It doesn't serve a purpose. So having this communication skill is really important. An actuarial career can be one of the most diverse, exciting, and rewarding in the world. Most exciting in the world? I mean, like, I think we have to try to define excitement. I mean, I work with data and like, I have a lot of fun and it's intellectually stimulating, but exciting? Actuaries use their skills to help measure the probability and risk of future events. Yes. Every area of business is subject to risks. Yes. So an actuarial career offers many employment options. Yes. Including banking, insurance, woo, healthcare, pensions, investments, but also non-financial areas. A career as an actuary or actuarial analyst gives you the chance to apply your skills in maths and statistics to the most exciting and significant real world challenges. There they go calling it exciting again. Maybe I'm missing some of the excitement. I still don't know what an actuary is. Maybe I'll just start telling people I'm a YouTuber. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to see more of my face, let me know in the comments if there are any actuary videos you would like to see, and thank you for calling. Bye!